Welcome to worship at Marin Lutheran Church. I am Pastor Thomas Gable. Thank you for joining with us in this virtual worship service. Today is in our church calendar, the 16th Sunday after Pentecost. And in our gospel reading, we encounter another parable from the gospel according to St. Matthew. This parable is only found in this gospel and it is usually titled, The Laborers in the Vineyard. We will hear that read in our gospel reading and then reflected on in our homily. Our service continues with the opening hymn. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Almighty and eternal God, you show perpetual loving kindness to us, your servants. Because we cannot rely on our own abilities, grant us your merciful judgment and train us to embody the generosity of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Jonah. When God saw what the people of Nineveh did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. But this was very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord, is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning. For I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and ready to relent from punishing. And now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat down east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what would become of the city. The Lord God appointed a bush and made it come up over Jonah to give shade over his head to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was very happy about the bush. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the bush so that it withered. When the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind, and the sun beat down on the head of, the, of Jonah so that he was faint and asked that he might die. He said, It is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, 
is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, you are concerned about the bush for which you did not labor and which you did not grow. It came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left and also many animals? Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel on this 16th Sunday after Pentecost is found in the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 20th chapter. Jesus says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Dear God, take our hands and use them. Take our feet and move them, and take our hearts and set them on fire. In your name we pray. Amen. Frederick Beekner, an author and theologian, begins his memoir, The Eye of the Heart, this way. I bring Naya into the magic kingdom. Naya is my grandmother who died in 1961. She walks across the green library carpet and stands at the window looking out. The magic kingdom is my haven and my sanctuary, the place where I do my work, the place of my dreams and my dreaming. I originally named it the magic kingdom as kind of a joke, part Disneyland and part the land of Oz. But by now it has become simply its name. It consists of the small room you enter through the office and the library. For Beekner, his library and his office are a special place, a special place where mystical and magical things happen, where he thinks about life, his life, 
and the lives of other. It's a room where he contemplates, listens to, and talks with God. Do any of you have a place like that in your life? A familiar space and time where you can think and pray and get away from it all? Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early and hired some laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sends them to work. Then he goes out again about 9, 9 o'clock, noon, 3 o'clock, and 5 p.m., and finds and searches for more laborers and sends them into the vineyard, telling them he'll pay them whatever is right. At the end of the day, they all get paid the same wage. Of course, this upsets the first hired, but that's what they agreed upon. The parable concludes with the manager throwing out those who grumbled first, the first hired, saying, Take what belongs to you and go. I believe that Jesus is provoking us, provoking us into seeing that the kingdom of God, the realm that we have been accepted into, is one where everyone is invited. In Jesus' magical kingdom, God is continually going out and inviting more and more people into this realm. God is always in our neighborhoods, at the grocery store, at the town center, at the doctor's office, in the canal, and in the open spaces, always calling and cajoling all people into a realm where all are equal. In fact, the reason for our very place in the kingdom is not some notion of justice or our own good works or our wonderful personalities, but simply the invitation from God. God is in the invitation business, constantly inviting you and me into a magical and mystical kingdom where we're about the work of love in all its facets and phases. Years ago, I received an invitation to a progressive dinner. You know, a meal where each course takes place in a different location. On the invitation, we were encouraged to come to a movable feast. A movable feast. The kingdom of God, that magical kingdom that God has invited us into, is a movable feast. For the kingdom of God is not a library or some other kind of room. It's not in a specific geographical location, but it's all around us and everywhere. Anywhere there is love and acceptance and mercy and peace, there is the magical kingdom of God. Years ago, I received a card from a friend and a member of the congregation that I served in Jersey City, New Jersey. On the cover of the card was a striking photograph he took of the tops of the burning and smoke-covered World Trade Center. On the inside, it had this verse from 1 Corinthians. Love knows no limit to its endurance no fading of its hope. It can outlast anything. It is, in fact, the one thing that will stand when all else has fallen. God has invited you and I and everyone to an ongoing, movable feast 
God has invited us into the story of God's people that began millennia ago, a drama that has endured the rise and fall of human empires and nations and leaders. God has invited us into the wonderful and magical kingdom of love because God delights in our being and in our being together. And be assured that the kingdom of heaven will continue to grow in this world, disseminating mercy and justice and love. For love knows no limits to its endurance, no fading of its hope. It can outlast anything. It is, in, in fact, the one thing that will stand when all else has fallen. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all of those in need. Generous God, you make the last first and the first last. Where this gospel challenges the church, equip it for our works of service. Strengthen those who suffer for Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Where we find envy and create enemies, you provide enough for all. Bring peace to places of conflict and violence. Accompany people of faith as they nurture relationships in new ways. Where the sin of racism fractures our relationships, bring repentance and reconciliation. Inspire leaders with creativity and wisdom. Bless the work of negotiators, peacemakers, and development workers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Reveal yourself to all in need as you are gracious and merciful. Slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, ready to relent from punishing. Accompany judges and lawyers, victims of crime and those serving sentences Give fruitful labor and livelihood to those seeking work. 
We lift before you those we name out loud and hold now in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sun and wind, bushes and worms, cattle and great cities, nothing in creation is outside your concern, mighty God. Lord, in your mercy, tend to it all. Even beyond our expectations, you choose to give to us generously. Grant life, health, and courage to all who are in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you, would you share that peace? The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Thanks be to you, our God, blessed Trinity. You are almighty, all wisdom, all truth. In you, our maker, is endless bliss. You hold the universe tenderly, for you love everything you have made. You long for us to be one with you, beholding us as innocent and lovable. And in your gracious goodness, you desire that all shall be made well. Now I invite you to raise up your piece of bread or your cracker. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now I invite you as one community to eat of the bread of life. And now I invite you to raise up your cup of wine or grape juice. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As one community, let us drink of the cup of salvation. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven. Into your beloved vineyard, wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst, guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ and led by the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Mother in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 
bless you and lead you in the way of truth and life. Amen. forth into the world to serve God. May God's word be in our hearts and on our lips. May God's words be in our touch and direct our feet. Today and every day, may God's word be the life we live. Thanks be to God. <laughs>